Greetings Ventures, it's Lauren Gaming, and I am waving to the camera even though it's off for this part of the video. Welcome to the New Year's update. Sorry this is a bit late, but I was tied up previously. But I'm going to go over uh, the characters first, because that's what you guys care about, the characters. And then you'll probably be off and doing the event after you see that portion of the video. But I welcome you to stay, because I'll go over all the stuff that was in this update. But yeah, first let's go over the new gotcha. The first banner you will see on the New Year's Sale Battle Gotcha is the free once per day gotcha. So, uh, once per day until January 9th, you'll be able to drop in this once a day in an attempt to get one of these four new New Year's characters, but you are still guaranteed at least a three star character with each pull. Let's just do that right now. Awesome, Raul. Anyway, but uh, we got tons of more chances to roll on this, so. You may not exactly want to go all out on the banners themselves until you get all these free draws out of the way, but that's your choice right there. But let's go over the two banners. First up we have the New Year's Sale Battle Rich Gotcha with Eyes, Wealth, and Tione. It's, I'm glad to see Wealth get a new character. Unfortunately, he's an assist character, which is, which is kind of... Uh, poor Wealth. He's definitely getting a movie character, though. He has a new outfit for the movie. I'd be severely disappointed if he does not get a new character there. But it's cool to see that he's actually getting a new character regardless. He looks pretty awesome in that art. And of course, Eyes and Tione are looking spectacular as well. Then on the second banner of the New Year's Sail Battle Fun Gotcha with uh, Tiona looking as cute as ever. Every time they make a new Tiona, I just think it's so cute. She is cute. And we have Tsubiki, which I was kind of thinking we might get because it's been a long time since we got a Tsubiki. I just wasn't sure because she's part of the old New Year, but she's a three-star event character in that. So, cool to see a new Tsubiki. Unfortunately, like Welp, she is an assist character. And of course, as always, a new Lafia, guys. What a surprise. I do like the art on this Lafia, though. I do like how her hair is to the side and braided. I do think the art is good here. So, all around good art but let's go over the characters themselves now do keep in mind i'm just doing a general overview of the new characters this is not an in-depth analysis so i'm just giving you my initial thoughts on the new units themselves starting with crimson tempest eyes now i wasn't thinking she was going to be a, a magic attacker but since we got magic weapons for both tione and eyes it makes a lot of sense for them to be magic attackers with this new event now she does have some pretty impressive stats at plus five with 1400 magic attack and 2600 HP, which I think is pretty high for a magic attacking character, if not the upper tier of uh, HP pools for magic attackers. Ice's special arts is Fleur Le Rafaga, which is an AoE ultra fire magic attack, which does 30% extra damage per each target's magic resist reduction skill, which, and what that means is for every instance of uh, your opponent having magic resistance reduction, like say your assist uh, reduces their magic resistance or and a skill reduces magic resistance so you can have up to plus 60 percent uh damage with that move if you have both an assist magic re resist reduction skill and a adventurer magic resist reduction skill it's very similar to a uh, halloween rule if you know him from war games i bet you do turn three rule is ugh. her first attack is carmine blaze which is an aoe mid-fire magic attack with a temporary magic boost and reduces magic resistance by 25 percent for two turns and there it is that Magic Resist uh, debuff, which will help with that multiplier for her special and also her third skill, which I'll get to in a sec. Her second skill is Cardinal Blade, which is a single target fast high fire magic attack with an ultra penetration rate. And her third skill is Blast of Pain, an AoE high fire magic attack that does plus 50% damage per instance of a target having their magic resistance reduced. And she does have some abilities which you should take notice of, the first of which being Piercing Strike, which does plus 10% damage upon penetration attacks. So that really goes well with her single target attack, which has a high penetration rate. So the penetration goes off, it's plus 10% damage with that piercing strike. And the other thing to look at is that 35% wind resistance. And that's kind of important because there are a lot of popular wind characters in war games right now. Gale Disguise Ryu, the Attack on Titan Bell, and the uh, Glistening Elf Ryu as well. Now, as for what I think of Eyes overall, I think she'll fare very well in war games with the Blast of Pain move uh, because it does plus 50% more damage uh, with each instance of a target having a magic resist reduction. So, 
one per day assist, like a uh, four star Hermes or Demeter, for example, and then one from an adventurer uh, like herself. Now, the one thing to take note of is you don't necessarily have to wait for her to do her own magic resistance debuff. You could just use uh, Elf's Honor Lafia, for example, and she has a fast attack. So she'll actually get that magic resist off because there's 10% magic resist reduction on Elf's Honor Lafia's AoE fast attack. And then you're already set to go if you already have a assist character with magic resist reduction like Hermes or Demeter. And from the get-go on turn one, when Eyes goes uh, towards the end of the turn because she's a magic attacker and this is not a fast attack, she'll be doing a very powerful blast of pain, regardless of whether or not uh, Lafia's magic resist reduction is only 10% as opposed to Eyes' 25%. It's really important to get the damage off uh, as fast as possible. And even if your opponent has plus five Minstrel Elf Aina, which nullifies the first two magic attacks done to characters, uh, if you have Guild Disguise or you and Elf's Honor Lafia, they'll go first because they have fast attacks, and then you don't have to worry about Aina nullifying the Blast of Pain from Eyes. And as for single target, she can hold her own with that Cardinal Blade, with that Ultra Penetration Rate doing plus 10% more damage upon penetrations. Next up, we have Geisha Elf Lafia. She is also a magic attacker. Uh, with decent HP and magic attack, of course. And this Lafia uses light magic. Her special art is Radiant Lily, an AoE ultra light magic attack that slows the targets. Now, I myself would rather prioritize a move that has a temporary boost to magic as opposed to wanting to use one that slows, but that's me. But uh, normally in war games, your, your goal is to kill your target as fast as possible because it seems uh, more and more that war games is ending faster and faster. Uh, at least by turn 3 or 4, and by that time you may not even be able to use the special arts. Her first skill is Clear Summer, an AoE low light magic attack that also increases her light attack damage by 75% for 4 turns. Her second combat skill is Dispel Areole. I probably said that wrong, but hey look, they they misspelled Dispel. It's, there's supposed to be one L, I believe. Anyway, it's a AoE mid light magic attack that increases her magic by 60% for 4 turns. Now, if you have Christmas Bell or Levi, you'll probably recognize the style of the first two skills where there's buffs attached to each AoE attack, so this is definitely intended to be used in war games. I do remember because Lafia is a magic attacker, she will go towards the end of a turn in the turn order, and it takes two turns for her to set up her buffs, and then on the third turn she will use a horoscope ray, and by that time, you may already have your units at very low health because, like I said before, war games is on a very fast pace right now. And like with the uh, Crimson Tempest Eyes I talked about earlier, she can get going super fast on turn 1 with Elf's Iron Lafia and Gale Disguise Ryu. Now that doesn't mean that Lafia is a bad character, especially if you have characters to support her and help her uh, survive that long, like Halloween Raoul or Almighty Viter Osfi. Now like Crimson Tempest Eyes, she has that Piercing Strike ability, but remember uh, this Lafia doesn't have any moves with bonus penetration rates, but it is still a nice thing to have when she does do a penetration. And remember, she also has 35% dark resistance as well, so if you're going against any dark characters, you'll be taking less damage. So this Lafia is pretty much built for war games, and if you need a magic attacker for war games, she is not a bad choice, but I do think that Eyes is the more attractive choice. Skills and looks. <laughs> Next up, we have the bustier of the two Amazon twins, Blushing Piani? Piani? I don't know. Tione! She is a magic type attacker uh, with... Lower magic attack than both Lafia and Eyes for some reason. She, has, she does have higher defense though, and uh, her HP is in the middle of those two units. Her special arts is Sacred Piani, a single target ultralight magic attack with a temporary magic boost. A very good uh, special arts, especially for single target encounters. Like for example, Record Buster, and I believe the new Record Buster that will happen next week was revealed to be a Dark Element Reveria, and I wonder... What's going to be effective against a Dark Element Reveria? Probably Light Magic. And by coincidence, these Light Magic characters have Dark Resistance. Huh. There's nothing going on there, I swear. Crunchyroll swears. Her first skill is Flash Perfume, a single target low light magic attack that increases her light attack damage by 75% for 4 turns. Her second skill is Rampage Beat. It increases her special arts gauge charge gain by 100% for 4 turns, very similar to how the Countess Seer assist works. And it's also a low light magic attack, single target by the way. Now Rampage Beat is a very interesting skill because we have not had anything like it before, 
but it looks like you're supposed to be using it during something like Record Buster to get more special art attacks off with Tione. Uh, especially the one that's going to happen next week, which is more than likely a uh, week two light attacks. But with this Tione, you're probably going to get at least five special arts off uh, during that Record Buster. And lastly, her third skill is Heavenly Blow, a single target highlight magic attack with a temporary magic boost and reduces light resistance by 25% for three turns. Can someone say power creep? It's not often that we have a high attack with a temporary magic boost combined with yet another attachment like light resistance reduction. So yeah, this is definitely going to be uh, used on a light team uh, during single target encounters like Record Buster. This Tione is going to work really well with Lovely Travel Lily because she's another light magic attacker and she also reduces magic resistance so that helps Tione as well. And looking at the abilities, why am I not surprised to see this? Better than the 10% that Lafia and Eyes get, she gets 20% more damage upon penetration. So if you have something like the assist uh, Trickster Loki that gives penetration rate, uh, this is going to work really well. She's going to be doing a ton of damage between her uh, light attack buff, her light resistance reduction, and if she penetrates any of those attacks, it's going to hurt a lot. And of course, there's that Dark Resistance again. It'll be really helpful for that Dark Element very Record Buster next week, huh? And the final adventurer on the Gacha Banners is the cutest of the Amazon Twins, Blustering Beauty Tiona, a Balance-type character. I am slightly disappointed that we got a Balance-type Tiona because we just got a Balance-type Tiona from the uh, previous Debutante event that was in September. So I was kind of looking forward to Tiona getting a new physical attacking unit of some kind because that's what I know her for. Physical attacks! But regardless, let's go over her skills. Her special art is Gamine Prune, an AoE Ultra Thunder physical attack with a 50% chance to stun. Now again, because she is a balanced character, this isn't going to hurt quite as much as other special attacks coming from actual attacking characters, and I advise you use those rather than this. Her first combat skill is Guardian Tonere. I'm probably saying that completely wrong, but whatever. It buffs your party's physical resistance and magic resistance by 35% for two turns. Now that's pretty substantial because you're getting both those buffs with one move, though it is only two turns. Second skill is Temerite Innocence, which buffs your party's agility and endurance by 30% for three turns. And again, we have a super buff doing two different things with one move, uh, and this time it's lasting three turns. So not only are you getting the physical and magic resistance, you're also getting endurance as well. So you're covered on both sides of the uh, attack spectrum between physical and magic, and it's being further cushioned without endurance. And that agility is not going to hurt either, especially in cases where you might have slimmer characters to your opponent, and that agility buff is going to give you the edge to have your units go first, and that's oh so important in horror games, getting your characters to go first. And her last skill is Fodrin Edge. A single target delayed mid thunder physical attack that puts targets to sleep. Notice how it says delayed, which is kind of important because that suggests that it's going towards the end of the turn, which is a good thing because if you sleep your opponents towards the beginning of the turn, uh, you still have characters left to attack. And uh, when they attack a slept character, that character is just going to wake right back up. So it makes a lot of sense to make sure that Tiona sleeps the characters at the end of the turn. Do remember it's single target, so if you use this in war games, do note it's going to only hit one target and because it's four games you don't get to choose what that target's going to be. And this Tiona has a few interesting abilities of note, the first of which of course being this blessing. When countering instead of attacking regularly it extends buffs for allies for one turn. So if your allies have any buffs on they will be extended by one turn. So you may not even need to worry about uh, Tiona of putting these buffs back on because they'll be extended if she's countering. So if you have an assist that can increase counter rate or even a, an adventurer that can do that like Almighty Fighter Osfi has a counter rate buff along with her heal, that will work really well with this Tiona. And she also has a plus 30% guard so she's guarding a lot of the attacks that are going to be hitting her and they're not going to be hitting her for that much because of her two buffs. And she also has 35% water resistance so in the case of water characters going against Tiona they're probably not doing much damage at all between those buffs and her guard. And on to the two assist characters. First up is Festa Blade Wealth, and I do love his art. He looks pretty rad right here. Uh, his stats are pretty balanced, uh, designed to be put on basically any character, but that is a pretty high HP pool of 1200, so if you have a squishy character, it wouldn't hurt to put wealth on them. 
His assist skill is Pose of Diligence. At level 60, it will buff your allies' taunt resistance and stun resistance by 75%, and also their endurance by 4%. So, as is a similar case with the uh, new Christmas Seer, uh, it's another double resistance assist, this time being Taunt and Stun. And a plus 5, it's 100% resistance from Taunt and Stun, and that value for Endurance is plus 5%. Like I said with Seer, I'm not sure how useful uh, these double resistance assists are going to be in cases like War Games, because there are a lot of different ailments that can happen in War Games, and it feels really strange to be wasting your assist slot to make sure that you're nullifying two of them, when you could just be using Ceremonial Flame Hestia to negate the first instances of any ailment happening to you. So that's my take on using those types of assists for war gains, but in cases like Record Buster or Familiar Events, stuff with boss type characters, it may be useful to have a 4 star assist characters at your disposal that can do multiple ailment resistances. And lastly we have the assist Camellia Kimono Subaki. Again she has pretty balanced stats, they are lower in the physical attack and magic attack range and defensive range than Wealth. But she does have 554 dexterity of plus 5, and remember the dexterity affects stuff like penetration rates and critical rates, so the higher your dexterity is, the more likely you are to get those things. And uh, as we've seen before, a common theme with the new adventurers here is penetration. Her assist skill is head turner, and what a head turner this Subaki is. Anyway, at level 60 she reduces enemy critical rates by 8% and increases your allies counter rates by 15%. And a plus 5, these values are a 10% critical rate reduction and a 20% counter rate buff. So if you have any characters that play with counter, like the new Tiona, which increases the duration of your buffs by plus 1, or uh, the Halloween Bait, which does extra damage with his counters, or even Winter Cream Lily, which will heal your lowest health character upon counter. And the one thing I did forget to mention is that these characters are not time limited. We're finally out of that time limited to hell. We've been getting back to back to back events with just time limited characters, so it's great that these characters will be added permanently into the general pool, but also part of this batch of banners is a assist pickup gotcha for Sacred Fire Hestia, a very good assist for war games, but uh, she is guaranteed on that fifth draw, which will take 2,000 eras to get to. So it is something to think about if you're wanting to get Sacred Fire Hestia or get a bond for her. And in the item shop, you have the New Year's bundle, which you can buy three of, they cost 600 paid eras each. And they will give you two different uh, 11 draw tickets the first one being a new year four star guaranteed 11 draw ticket which will guarantee you one of the six new characters uh, from the new year's gotcha banners and you also get a regular four star guaranteed 11 draw ticket which will just guarantee you a four star character on the general banner which i believe does not include these new year units quite yet you'll have to wait until after the new year's banners are gone for them to be added into the general pool and going over the event itself, you can see we'll be getting to get a free 4-star Finn that we can limit break all the way to plus 5. As you can see, he is uh, the rewards uh, for getting to the very end of the difficulties. And like most events, there will be a metal gotcha. The metals, of course, being drops from the event itself, and you can use these to draw from the metal boxes. What you should take note of here are the blade coppers and the fangs, which are the materials or Tione and Aiz's character weapon. So you can get a lot of their materials from here rather than continuously farming the crafting uh, quest in the boost tab for those Moonbow gems to exchange for these. You can just get them straight from the metal box. And of course there's the standard 3 star guaranteed ticket and you should just keep resetting every time you get this uh, to get to the next 3 star ticket. And in the exchange shop you of course have the hero metal and flame amulets you'll be wanting to get first with your currencies. Uh, because if you get three hero medals and three flame amulets, you can trade them in for a adventurer and assist prison bond, which can be used to limit break uh, non time limited characters like the new New Year characters. And of course, you want to be getting all the gnome tickets uh, so you can use them towards time limited star bonds as well as getting fate stones for your familia level. And of course, we have smelting stones, wet stones and the two star tickets. Like most events you want to be getting all the tickets and the medals and flame amulets and the rest is just extra stuff that you can get at your leisure. Now let's go over the new Finn for a little bit because he will be very useful to anyone that's uh, newer to the game because even though these event four star characters aren't as strong stat wise to regular four stars they are great 
for new players especially because you can plus five them so they might actually exceed uh, people that only have a regular four stars at only plus two or plus three this Finn is a balanced type so he's not a physical attacker his physical attack is not that high but what he's useful for is his abilities special arts is Sakura Tenebris I probably said that wrong but whatever it's an AoE ultralight physical attack with a temporary strength boost his first combat skill is void circle an AoE midlight physical attack that reduces enemy strength and magic by 25% for three turns a void circle is very similar to the move that Anakitty has which is an attack that reduces strength and magic by 35% but remember this is an event 4 star that, that we're getting for free so it's not quite as good but it's still very helpful for newer players that are struggling against bosses and the such. That 25% is still substantial. And his second skill is Riptide Roller, an AoE highlight physical attack. And his third skill is Crescent Abrasion, a single target highlight physical attack with a temporary strength boost. Now he is a balanced character so his attacks aren't going to hit quite as hard as a physical attacker would. But where he shines is that first skill, that strength and magic reduction to help you survive against enemies, especially if you're a newer player and don't have a character that has a debuff like Finn's. Let's finally get my face in here. Oh look, a Santa hat because it's not even Christmas yet, guys. We're doing New Year's stuff right now. What the heck? And uh, look, glasses, Lorne. Very rare side in glasses lore. And that was most of the stuff in the New Year's update. Now do remember the war game started earlier, so make sure to maximize your passes, unlike me, being dumb. And I believe the drawing for the Lotto of Mario, uh, at least for the fourth and fifth tier prizes started earlier. Uh, but we should be getting uh, the results pretty soon, as well as the distribution of prizes as well. And as a little celebratory thing, before the end of this video, if you want to stick around, I'm just going to do the first rolls on these two banners, because I don't see myself going uh, anywhere with these two banners because I'm pretty happy with where my characters are. But this is what I say, if I can consistently get top 500 in Record Buster and Hero 3 or King 1 in War Games, then I'm pretty happy with the state of my units. But if there's a new review, you, you you know, you know, I'm going in. But what I want from this is eyes, but let's see what happens here. I'm not going to close my eyes because first roll is guaranteed. Finn. <laughs> Finn. Uh, what? <laughs> Two fins. Now, a lot of the guys in my Discord have done a lot of rolls, and uh, there's been a lot of whelps. A lot of whelps. So, we'll see. Not guaranteed. Oh boy, here we go. Tione. Alright, alright. So, if I were to get like multiples of a character, it would be eyes, but I'm pretty happy with where my war game team is right now. So we'll see what the rest, we'll see what the final character is, the actual true guarantee is going to be. Alright, plus one Tione it is. Alright, so I got Tione. I was wanting eyes, but I can't complain about me only committing one roll into here and getting a limit break of somebody. I can't complain there. Here, I would want... Let's go Tiona. I find her the cutest character on this banner. I want Tiona. Let's, let's get the twins together. Let's do that. I don't mind that Subaki though. She, she looks good. <laughs> Head Turner. Head Turner Subaki. Not that we're getting a non-guarantee this time. That'd be ridiculous. Non-guarantees in the first two rolls on each banner. Super key. All right. Um, see, like I said, don't mind that. I do wish I had that Tiona though, but I'm not. I don't think I'm gonna roll anymore. We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what the free uh, draws give us, guys. I do hope you guys have good luck on the free draws. Remember to do them once a day, and the last day, of course, being January 9th. But that is it for the video, guys. I hope all of you have a great new year, and good luck on your rolls if you haven't done those yet. And I also hope a lot of you walk away really happy with the results of the Lotto of Mario. I don't know mine yet. I'm not even going to look up but if I had the numbers for the 4th and 5th prizes, because I'm just going to let fate uh, take me for a spin and see what I get. Uh, there is going to be a very important video I'll be releasing uh, either... Friday or Saturday, probably Saturday, and I hope all of you watch that video because it's going to talk about uh, the state of the channel itself, what my plans are for the future. So 
be on the lookout for that video. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this. If you like what you saw here, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. As always, if you want to stay updated on what I'm doing, follow me on Twitter and join my Discord for Damaji and Damemo discussion. And as always, continue enjoying your time venturing in Mario and the Dungeon. This is Lauren Gaming, and I'm signing out. Kuma 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 kala sashi kuma.